Alrighty folks, uh, just thought I would do a little um, fill-in episode here just while we're waiting for some components to come in uh, for our manual conversion. And the topic that I want to cover uh, is clutch versus clutchless um, gear, sh gear shifting in EV conversions. So this is a topic that comes up a fair bit and you know you'll get fairly polarized views on it. Some people will say oh you absolutely positively cannot use a manual gearbox uh, with an electric motor uh, without a clutch. And then some people will come along and say well oh you you know, I've used a, a clutchless system for quite some time and I don't have a problem with it. So just with the process that I'm going through at the minute for the conversion um, to manual, um, as you will know from the last episodes, uh, I am going with a clutchless uh, system. We just basically made a straight coupler here that goes from the motor uh, drive shaft straight into the gearbox um, input shaft just using the center of the clutch disc here uh, to, to transmit drive. Now I have built uh, two DC powered clutchless manual EVs uh, to date. Um, and both of those have been BMWs. Uh, both of them have used the G-Trag uh, five-speed uh, manual gearbox from the inline six engine. And both of those have shifted absolutely perfectly um, without the use of a clutch system. And the E39, as you will recall, has a big 13 inch uh, series DC motor with a very he a very heavy armature in it. That vehicle has just passed 50,000 miles as an EV now and uh, there is no um, issues with the gearbox at all. Um, and that was far from a new uh, gearbox either. The only thing that I did to it was change the oil. Now, people have said then that, okay, well, it's a different uh, scenario when you use a DC motor that has no regenerative braking versus an AC motor that will. And certainly, if we attempted to employ the same procedure uh, with this drivetrain in the E31 uh, we would run into some serious problems. Because what happens in a DC system like say the E39 is that we accelerate the vehicle um, up until when the the motor either comes out of its power band or we just uh, hit an, an RPM limit and we then wish to change up. So what I simply do is release the accelerator pedal, move the gear shifter into neutral and then apply gentle pressure into the gear that I want to uh, select. And what happens is that the motor starts to lose speed um, because it's no longer under power and the uh, synchro mesh inside the gearbox then pulls the two shafts to the same speed and the gears engage. I must do a driving video for you showing how this, this actually works but that's typically what happens. Now if we were to apply the same logic here, so let's say we pull away in second gear, we accelerate the motor up to three or 4,000 RPM, we would now like to go into third gear. So what would happen is that when I would release the accelerator pedal, 
the motor would turn into a generator and start to put load onto the uh, gear gearbox to slow the car down. I would then find myself unable to deselect the gear that I was what I was currently in. Because one thing a gearbox, uh, a modern one anyway, typically won't do is come out of a gear when there's a load on the actual uh, drivetrain. So I could probably just ease off the pedal until I hit a point that there was no regen. I could then pull out of that gear. But when I would then release the pedal and attempt to select another gear, the motor would immediately decelerate down um, and selecting an alternative gear whilst driving uh, would be very, very difficult, if not impossible. So, how do we get around that? Well, fortunately, the inverter that I'm using uh, for basically all of my of my of my AC uh, projects now is the open source inverter designed by Johannes Hubner, and even in its uh, unmodified form, because I've modified it many ways, is a highly configurable uh, piece of kit. Um, so there's full programmability in how. Uh, the motor comes onto power, goes into regen, when it goes into regen, how much regen we get, how long the regen stays in. It's just there's 150 things to program in this. So, a very, very simple change that we're going to make to how the uh, drivetrain works here. We're simply going to uh, tell the inver inverter that we only want brake pedal regen. So when I release the throttle pedal, the motor will just coast the very same way that a DC motor would work. It won't try to slow itself down. And when I press the brake pedal, the inverter will then see that I want to slow the car down and will bring in regen. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. I know some people like the whole thing about single pedal driving, whereby you kind of just, you know, like two thirds of the pedal accelerates the car and the one third of the pedal decelerates the car. And I can see um, how there would be advantages to that. But that being said, we have a lot of options here that we can most certainly... Um, change gears with an AC motor without a clutch. I have no doubt that I'll be, a, be able to manage that. And I'll be demonstrating this uh, as soon as we have the car back driving, hopefully in a few weeks time. So just thought I would do a little video on this particular topic, uh, folks, because um, it's one of, as I say, the tends to get uh, bandied ar around quite a bit in the EV community. Now, I suppose just to, to sum up, some people will <coughs> will say to me, well, okay, Damien, that's fine, but why would you not use a clutch anyway? You know, wouldn't it make life easier? Uh, certainly would. There are, however, a few disadvantages. Um, some more serious than others, but the ones for me are that in this case a clutch adds weight, not just uh, physical weight to the vehicle, but rotating mass uh, that the motor then has to spin up and slow down. Um, it's considerably more difficult to line things up. Uh, when you have a clutch. Um, now again, I know that people that can do this, the whole CNC and 3D modeling and get everything lovely and then send their adapter plate out to be machined down to micron tolerances can just make all this stuff fall together easily. And if you're in a position to do that, more power to you. I, however, am not. So 
the simplicity of a straight on uh, coupler here certainly uh, plays a very heavy um, role in my making a decision to go with a clutchless system. So um, other things then would be on the Panzer, uh, keeping in mind we are doing a conversion from a car that was originally automatic and I actually made it an electric automatic, now we're going for an electric manual. So there are no clutch hydraulics, clutch pedal, etc. fitted to the vehicle. Now, again, could go in there and uh, decide that we, we wanted to retrofit all of these parts and that's in entirely feasible. But my logic here is don't do work, you don't have to. Um, so clutchless is the way that we're going here. And we'll see how that plays plays out. Okay, folks, thanks for, for tuning in, and uh, we'll be back soon uh, with the next part on our uh, Panzer um, manual gearbox conversion project. See you then.